Hey everyone, Vlad here, and today I want to show you how you can install your own DC 12 volt power connector back here in the bed of your Ford Maverick using the integrated Ford Maverick flex bed wiring. Let's jump on in! Okay, let's talk about supplies for today's project. We've got a drill with a step drill bit. This needs to be big enough to drill a hole for your outlet. Now we have a 10 millimeter socket set that is to remove the little bolts on our cubby here so we can pull that out and work on it without being uh, confined to that space. And then we have a T8 uh, screwdriver that's going to be to remove one of the anchors on the tailgate so that we can um, pull out that that plastic box. Um, then we have some wire crimpers and strippers. We have some bullet style wiring terminals um, for our connection points. We have some heat shrink tubing. I don't know if I'm going to need that, um, but I have it in case I do. I've got some electrical tape, a couple of colors just for color coding stuff. I have a uh, connector for our flex bed connector. This one I got off of eBay, um, but you should have gotten one with, from Ford when you um, picked up your truck. Then we have this uh, switch. Now this one is waterproof, it is sealed, and uh, it is uh, 25 amps, and you need to be able to drill a um, 5 32nd inch hole uh, to put this through. So we're going to need that. And then we have our terminal. And uh, that should be everything we need to get this going and uh, start our project. All right, so now the first thing you want to do is we're going to remove this box here. So this is where I want to put our terminal over here on this side of the box. Um, but the easiest way to work with it is going to be by pulling it out. And that's where you need your 10 millimeter socket or driver to remove these bolts. And you're just going to remove all of them all the way around until you're able to uh, have this box uh, unsecured from the bed. Now, there is this uh, tie down that is over here in the corner um, that's gonna prevent you from getting this box out once you have all these bolts removed. So that's where your T8 driver is gonna come into play and we're going to uh, remove this here. Uh, there are a couple of metal washers that are behind this. So be careful you don't lose these when you remove this because you want to make sure you put them back whenever you rehook this up um, but uh, I'll save you the time of watching me un unbolt all of these and I'll come back to you once uh, everything is out of here okay and now that all of these uh, bolts are removed and my little um, hitch my little tie down is down out you can now just remove this from its cubby hole and now we have it out so we can work on it as we please. Okay, so now we need to drill our hole for our terminal. Now most of the terminals that you'll buy should give you a measurement for what this hole should be, but if it doesn't, then grab yourself a pair of calipers and measure uh, th this here so you know what size hole you need. And um, that's why I got this uh, step drill so that I can easily kind of gauge and move up if I need to. Um, I put up a little bit of electrical tape here on my bit so that I can just know, have a, a visual guide of when to stop because all the numbers here are on this little panel and they're really impossible to see whenever you're actually drilling. So um, make sure you go before you do any drilling that this is the side you want it to be at. This is how it kind of sits inside the cubby. This is the wall that I would like my outlet to be on. So I am in the right area and I'm going to drill here. Let's clean up this hole a little bit. Um, I do like the step drill bits too on plastic. Um, this hole is probably going to be too big for your standard drill bit. Um, and uh, 
hole saw doesn't do terribly well when it comes to plastic so um, that's why I like using the step drill bit so we're gonna feed our wiring that is connected to our terminal here through our hole um, actually before you do this you have to <laughs> So before you do all that, make sure you take this washer off. Uh, this is how everything, you know, seats onto the, the box. So if you leave it on, you're going to have to do like I just did and take it off so that you can get the wires through here and then still have it to uh, bolt down when you get everything through. So I'm pretty close here with my sizing. I'm going to finesse it through a little bit. I don't want to do, uh, drill any higher than I have to. And I think this is really where I want it. So I'm going to take a moment and just thread all this through. And uh, we'll get back to you once that's in. Okay, so our terminal is through, which means we need to put our uh, washer on so that we can secure this to the back of the um, box here that way our terminal doesn't move now um, I chose this particular type of terminal because it has the wiring incorporated into it and it goes through here it's gonna make it more waterproof a lot of the terminals you're gonna find on the internet are gonna have like two little posts in the back one for positive and one for negative and uh, those are okay but you're gonna have to take um, take your time if you want to make sure there's extra waterproofing there to seal those um, so that you don't have any shorts because of water or something like that. Now inside of here, we're gonna turn this terminal to the direction we would like it to sit. Uh, this has a dust cover um, on it, so I'm gonna make sure that that's uh, facing the direction I want and uh, make sure that this gets tightened down. It's just a hand tighten. All right, so that is in place. Now we just need to drill a hole for our um, terminal here. And mine has some nice instructions here on this card that tell me what size the hole needs to be. Um, so let's figure that out and uh, I will drill that hole and get it in place. Okay, so I've got my step drill bit marked with where I want to stop. Now, if I were to put the plug here, that means my switch would be in front of the plug here, but I want it to kind of be slightly behind it inside of the cubby, so I'm gonna put it back here and above it. Uh, that way, if I have a cable coming through, I got electric, then um, it isn't accidentally turning off the switch when it hits it if uh, something moves around. Yep, a lot of plastic here. If you have like a uh, pocket knife or a razor blade, you may be able to get it in here to kind of remove some of this XX plastic, uh, which is what I'm going to go grab here in a second, uh, just to get this taken care of. Let's see. Alright, cool. So I'm not going to drill this hole any higher or work, play around with the, the extra plastic. I'm just going to kind of thread it through on its own here. There we go. Nice and easy. Okay. So here we, we have inside. Now my, uh, it's important to know which way the switch should be for on and off. So my little terminal has a uh, break in the circle here. It, it's like a, it's a full circle, but there's a little notch at the bottom. And so the bottom is off. Um, so I need to make sure that notch is facing down. That way I know that flipping the switch down is off, flipping it up is on, and I'm good to go. And then it has a little metal uh, washer ring here to secure it to the box, similar to that terminal we used but it's just on this opposite side so secure that and then also 
these mine came with this nice little dust cover it looks like a little it just, and it'll just screw over the top of that onto the threading and then that adds a little extra layer of um, you know protection against water and moisture getting in there and then interfering with your switch so our next step now that we have put in our switch and our terminal is to start with wiring and we're going to wire up our switch first we're going to use these um, little bullet connectors male and female to get our positive wire connected to our switch we're using the positive wire because this is on a vehicle the vehicle is already made to where our ground is on the negative so we're going to put our switch on the positive terminal there and that keeps the ground constantly going to our um, outlet here so um, I'm going to put male connectors here on the switch. I'm going to put female onto the receiver here for our um, outlet. And I'm actually going to cut this short here so that uh, we don't have this huge wire going around. And um, if you have your wire strippers, you can easily, you know, create a new, you know, strip that out. And then I just give it a nice spin so that it'll go into that terminal nice and clean. Just be careful you don't spin it to where you're breaking wires off because obviously that um, interrupts the integrity of your wiring. So I will go ahead and secure these bullet connectors and we'll get right back to you. Okay, so I have put on my bullet connectors here and I have my positive one with the female. So I'm gonna take the top part of my toggle switch and I'm going to connect it there. And then I'm gonna take this extra bit of wire I cut off to reduce the size here and put my uh, female connector here so it can connect to the bottom here. And then I'll have a, come on buddy, you gotta move back just a little bit. There you go, good boy. All right, and then we got to take, then we'll have our positive and uh, negative wires to go to our connector for our flux bed. So uh, let's go ahead and get that secured and we'll be ready to start uh, working with our flux bed connector. Okay so uh, we have our final connector here um, from our to our ground that just goes straight to our outlet and we have it on my um, flex bed connector here. Now your flex bed terminal here on this side of the vet is always on this side of your tailgate and you just undo this little panel make sure you depress this little button here and you can unhook that and then your connector here should just slide right in place now make sure when you do this that you um, don't have the vehicle on you want to make sure it's off and uh, because this this gets um, power whenever the vehicle is on Okay, he's got to be in the in the vehicle, in the, and it's got to be on um, for this to get any power. So everything up to this point, there's no power going through this circuit. Um, but what we want to do before we go any further is test this, make sure it's working. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I have uh, an inverter that I'm going to use to test, and so we'll plug that into here, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, get some power going through it. All right, so here we are, moment of truth. I have my little inverter here. I've got my inverter plugged into our new outlet. We've got our switch here, and I've got the ignition turned on. Now, if you're worried about, oh, well, do you need a fuse or something like that? What if what you're about to do goes completely wrong? This, this uh, flex bed is connected to a fuse inside of the fuse box, so that part is covered. You don't need to wire one in line here unless you want for some reason, some added protection. So um, this is on. So I'm gonna toggle this little button here. All right, so my toggle switch is off. I expected to get no power, which is exactly what we got. Now I'm gonna switch my toggle switch here. Let's go ahead and hit power. And I've got a little blue light. It's probably gonna be hard to see here uh, with the sunlight coming through, but I do have a blue light indicating that this inverter is getting power from our outlet. So that means all of our wiring is 100% ready to go. 
And uh, the last thing we need to do is button up all this wiring. I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, heat shrink tubes and sleeves on them. And then we're gonna put it back here in the housing. Um, one thing to note is that we're going to need to uh, move this switch. It is in this post here. Um, so we're going to have to take the switch and move it into this compartment here so that um, we don't have wiring coming out of here to get to this port here. Um, so that's going to be my next step before we finalize all of the wiring here. But that is a pretty simple step. We're just going to use um, some wiring uh, to pull this through into this compartment here. All right, so here we are. Um, this is the flex bed terminal that we need to connect to. It is in the bed here, but we need to move it over into our compartment so that our wiring doesn't have to come out of our box over here and connect to the flex bed. That would be a little bit weird, right? So we have, um, what I've done is I've taken a wire and I've run it through, there's a hole in the back side over here. I've run that wire through there and over to here. And then I've taken some electrical tape and I've connected it to the terminal. So all I should need to do is take this wire and pull it from this side. And that will bring this connector into our compartment over here. And we'll be able to reinstall all of our, uh, our box and that wiring that we did into this little cubby. Uh, now this little cubby, as you can see, has a bottom to it. There is a uh, cover underneath the truck that protects this side of the truck. There isn't a similar one over on the driver's side, but over here on the passenger side, all of this has this little splash guard type uh, connector. Part of it, I think, is because they put this little cubby hole here. The other part is I think there's wiring going through there that impacts the rear backup camera. So um, going this route is much easier than trying to go underneath the truck. Uh, that's why we pulled out this box to begin with to do our work. So let me pull this uh, terminal through and then we'll be ready to hook everything back up in its final place and uh, give it the final test to make sure everything is good to go. Here we are, we're at the final stage. We've got our connections wrapped up in electrical tape. I heat shrink those. Um, the bullet tips uh, connectors that I got are actually heat shrinkable. So they made that a lot simpler. Now we have to put this box back in here and you're gonna realize if you keep this fully secured and not moving you're gonna have trouble getting this back into this housing so let me feed my wires through and we've loosened up this uh this nut here um so that we can get it past the uh the metal piece here the toggle switch should be enough to where you can kind of just squeeze it through um, but this uh the actual outlet is going to need a little bit of finessing to push it through and the best way to do that is to loosen up that secure um, securing that on the back so that you can push it through into the box a little bit and then you're gonna have to be um, a little bit ingenuitive with you know kind of getting your tiny little fingers in there and uh, tightening this up nut back up but that'll uh, get everything back in this housing without you having to remove any paneling from underneath the truck make sure it's nice and secure before you move on to putting the bolts back in place. Thanks for tuning in everybody. That wraps up our project here today. Quick note before we leave that this is all under 120 amp fuse under your fuse box in the hood. So keep that in mind with what you're trying to run through here as far as powering. Uh, if you go over that 20 amps, you're gonna blow that fuse. Uh, but anyway, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate the views. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content from Glad Administrator Gaming. And I'll catch you next time.